Hello, welcome back to the studio. I'm super excited about today's video. I just got back from the post office a little while ago and I picked up this package. Um, I've got some sticky notes on it covering up my address and the sender. Uh, but this is from Roman Schmal and I've just received their 25 new additions to their watercolor line. <laughs> All right, so uh, I was so very excited about the contents of this package that I completely spazzed on recording some of this intro. So here the package is already open, as you can see, but Roman Schmal reached out to me a few weeks ago and offered to send me some more paints. So I received a few paints from their existing line. Uh, for my own tests as well as all 25 of their brand new additions to their line. And there are some paints that I'm so, so, so excited to try out uh, from these new additions. They look so great uh, just based on the descriptions. So I'm really excited to try them out and share them all with you. So let's get right into it. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Lee. I'm a botanical and natural science illustrator based in Kitchener, Waterloo, Canada. On this channel, I share watercolor techniques and tips and some insights into my daily life as an illustrator. If this is content that you're interested in, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. My first order of business after spending some time admiring these pretty little candies and their wrappers was to unwrap all of these paints and label them. Uh, I won't spend too long on this on this video if you want some more high quality labeling content. I would encourage you to join my weekly uh, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Sci Art and Chill live stream right here on YouTube uh, where I bring you into my world and all the fun stuff I do in the studio which is sometimes I print labels for 30 minutes. Uh, and sometimes I do more interesting stuff. It's riveting content either way. That's it for this pitch. Let's get into swatching. One quick order of business before I get started with this video. These paints were sent to me for free by Roman Schmal, the manufacturer. However, I am not being paid to create this review. And in fact, uh, I wasn't even asked to make a review positive or negative when I was sent these paints. Um, this is my own genuine first impressions. Roman Schmal Aquarius is a small watercolor brand based in Poland. Uh, they offer a very wide range of different paints. It, uh, the line was 140 colors, which was already a really huge watercolor line. And now with these 25 new colors, it'll be 165 different colors, mostly single pigments. The creator, Roman Schmal, has a background in chemistry and is particularly focused in finding unique pigments as well as very light, fast colors. So that's something that really appeals to me. I've already done two reviews on Roman Schmal paints. The first one was with paints that were sent to me right when the brand launched. And then the second one was paints that I purchased with my own money. I have linked to both of those up in the cards. While I have tried a wide selection of paints from this line, I haven't tried all of them, but luckily some people have. Um, so if you go check out Dr. Otto Kano's series of seven videos, she swatches the original 140 color line, all 140 colors. Uh, so you should go check that out right after you watch this video, and that way you will have seen all 165 colors that are offered by Roman Schmal Aquarius. Okay, I think you've watched enough labeling now. So now, as if by magic, we are starting out this swatching session strong with this absolutely beautiful golden yellow made with PY181, which is a unique pigment to Roman Schmal. Over the years, I've really struggled to find yellows that I really love, and this is one of my favorites that I've ever seen. It's just such a beautiful, warm yellow, and it's very nearly transparent. If you'd like to see a video on my rants and my trials with 
yellow pigments, let me know down in the comments below and I'll be happy to do that for you. The next pigment in this collection is Golden Orange. This one is made with PO62, and this is fairly similar to the Golden Yellow before it, but with more of an orange tangerine tone. I was in far too much of a rush to get all of my pigment information written down on these swatches before I started, but Golden Orange, like Golden Yellow before it, is a semi-transparent paint although to my eye it is slightly more opaque than the golden yellow. So it turns out that I've been accidentally recording and editing in 4K recently, so if you happen to have a high-res screen, you can double check your settings now and stream this in 4K so that you'll see all of the details of these beautiful paints. Next we have Aquarius Orange, and you'll notice in my pigment numbers here that I've got some confusing information. Aquarius Orange is made with a pigment that is too new to have received an official pigment number yet. Now I have confirmed with Roman Schmal that this is made with Diketo Perolo Perol, which is a new orange pigment. Um, it's nearly unique in the world of watercolor. It is also used by Winsor & Newton in their transparent orange. They have once released it as PO107, although they now don't list a pigment anymore either. So that's why that pigment information is that way. Roman Schmal would like you to know that this is, that his version is a little bit more opaque uh, just like a semi-transparent instead of fully transparent, and also that it granulates slightly. I will say that I didn't really notice that difference very strongly. I do, however, think it's a really gorgeous orange pigment. Definitely right up there. Uh, the Winsor Newton version was my favorite orange color, and this one is right up there with it. Our next paint is Transparent Pyrrole Orange, made with PO71. It is extremely similar to the Aquarius Orange that I just swatched right before. It's the most chromatic and bright version of Transparent Pyrrole Orange, PO71, that I have ever seen. Although this pigment is available from a variety of other brands, this is definitely the most beautiful version. And again, right in the running for one of my favorite oranges, right with the pigment right before it. I will say that Aquarius Orange and Transparent Pyrrole Orange by Roman Schmal Aquarius are extremely similar. I would have trouble f telling them apart if I didn't have labels on them and wasn't told exactly what to look for. They are both absolutely beautiful, and I would be happy to have either one of them on a palette, and I will definitely be using these in my pan palettes. Next, we have Deep Orange, made with PO64. This is similar in hue to the last two orange pigments, but it is visibly slightly more opaque. So this is definitely more in the realm of a true semi-transparent rather than a transparent paint like the last two. The next paint I'm swatching is Quinacridone Fuchsia, made with PR202. Quinacridone Fuchsia is a true magenta color, but very slightly more muted than something like a PR122 Quinacridone Magenta or Quinacridone Pink in the Roman Schmal Aquarius line. It's a beautiful color on its own, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how it performs and mixes.
Next we have Potter's Pink. This pigment is available from a number of brands, but the Roman Schmal Aquarius version is unique in two ways. So first of all, there are two shades of Potter's Pink. There's a more common, more reddish shade, and then there's a brighter, more pinky version. And this is the rarer, more pink version. It's also a very rewettable and nicely behaved formula. Potter's Pink can often behave in a sort of clumpy way and be very difficult to rewet, and this paint has none of those problems, so it's really unique. I'm really looking forward to adding this to some of my pan palettes. The next paint that I'm going to swatch is Misty Morning. So this is one of Roman Schmal's unique granulating mixes. In addition to having a very large selection of single pigment paints, Roman Schmal also includes some of these very unique mixes in their line. Misty Morning is made with PG50 and PV19, and it's got um, a sort of magical feeling separating quality where it's got a pink undertone and these sort of pockets of teal that granulate out. Just one of the prettiest effects paints I've ever seen. Next up, we have another one of these effects paints. This one's called Shadow Violet Light. I already own Shadow Violet from Roman Schmal. This one is made with PB36, PB29, and PR176, and it's sort of a bluey violet, um, somewhat light in mass tone, and then it waters out to, again, this sort of crazy cloudy color. Next we have Aquarius Gray. This is made with PW6 colon 1 and this is a rutile titanium pigment. It would be useful for painting rocks perhaps. It's a fairly opaque color. I think the only similar color that's available from another commercial line is titanium gray from Daniel Smith. Next we have Aquarius Cobalt Blue, which is, I would put this somewhere right in the middle of a traditional cobalt blue pigment and something more like a cerulean. I think this would be very useful for deep sky colors.
Next we have Cobalt Blue Deep made with PB74. This was a color that I was particularly excited about and it didn't disappoint. Uh, you may not know this, but I collect cobalt blue glassware and in watercolor I've always been trying to find that same deep cobalt blue and so far most cobalt blues have disappointed. PB74 is not a unique pigment, but it is a fairly rare one and the Roman Schmal Aquarius version is unique in that it re-wets really nicely and it can build a really solid mass tone as well as creating these very textured washes. When you water it down, it'll create these wonderful textures. Next we have Cobalt Sea Blue and this is now my favorite cobalt teal color. Um, Roman Schmal Aquarius also offers another cobalt teal. I thought I preferred cobalt teals made with PG50 like Roman Schmal Aquarius's original cobalt teal but this one is so much deeper and has like this neon teal color that is just I've never seen it anything like it before it's gorgeous and I can't wait to use it more Next, we have Sap Green Light. This is a mix of two pigments, PY110 and PG7. The Roman Schmal line is very extensive, but I will say that I think it was somewhat lacking in the green portion of the spectrum, so I'm, it's nice to see this bright green added in, although I probably wouldn't use a mixed pigment like this. Next we have another globally unique pigment, Perline Green Deep made with PBK32. So you might be familiar with the more common PBK31 Perline Green. Perline Green Deep is a somewhat warmer tone, um, so somewhat more yellowish but still a very deep dark green. <laughs> Fun story about this pigment uh, when i first saw it advertised on roman schmal's facebook page i thought that there was something wrong with the auto translated his uh, post had originally been written in polish and this was described as a rotten green color and i thought surely that's just google translate but no it turns out that this shade of green is actually called rotten green in polish Polish is just a very poetic language like that. Rotten or not, this is a beautiful color. I'm not sure that you would need both this and a traditional perylene green in the same palette, but it is an interesting variety and it is slightly different. I also noticed some texture while applying it, like it's got almost a granulation pattern, which is kind of neat. I've had a chance to speak to Roman Schmal about some of the interesting textures in some of his paints and he said that sometimes those just show up and he just tries to embrace it and thinks that it's great that some of his paints will just end up with some somewhat different textures and that makes his paints different from other paints and so he sees that as a positive. Next we have Burnt Sienna Monte Amiata. So uh, Roman Schmal and a few other brands offer a Monte Amiata Natural Sienna, which is a raw sienna tone that's somewhat more yellowish. And the Burnt Sienna Monte Amiata similarly is a much more um, orangey tone of Burnt Sienna than some other PBR7 Burnt Siennas. So if you really like the texture of 
true PBR7 burnt sienna, but you would prefer more of that orangey tone that you might see in a PR101 transparent orange iron oxide or like a burnt sienna from Windsor Newton, then this is a great middle ground that has both of those attributes. Next we have Aquarius Brown made with PBR11. This is again a fairly uncommon pigment, although not unique. Uh, Daniel Smith offers this pigment, they call it Lunar Brown, although Aquarius Brown appears to be a smoother, creamier consistency. It does still have a pronounced granulation, but it's got a very smooth mass tone. The next color I'm going to swatch is Indian Red. This is a very opaque, deep, deep, dark red. Uh, very, very rich color, and I feel like it could be very useful in adding some real weight to your colors. Next we have the first of two hematites. So hematite violet uh, has this lovely separation and dries a deep violet color, although it applies somewhat differently. Next we have the second of two hematites. This is hematite brown, um, and it's definitely more of a brown tone with again a very similar strong granulation as is characteristic in hematite pigments. Uh, I will say the hematite violet and the hematite brown are fairly similar, although the violet is more violet. Uh, so I would just choose one or the other, but probably not both in one palette. Now we're going to get into a line of some unique earth pigments. So first we have lazurite, lapis lazuli. Um, so this is the original lapis lazuli uh, before. It's like, it's the same compound as ultramarine, but it's the natural version. So some brands will list it as PB29. Roman Schmal prefers to not list pigments unless it's super clear what the pigment is. Roman Schmal is trying to distinguish himself by offering somewhat different versions, even within the same pigment as other brands. He'd like to point out that uh, his lazurite or lapis lazuli is definitely more on the gray side than some others. It's a very nice sort of stormy, blue-gray color, um, very light valued, but could be very useful for uh, some light touches of color. I don't paint much landscapes, but I could see putting it into a stormy sky, for example.
Next we have a much deeper blue earth tone, Vivianite Blue Ochre. Again, no pigment assigned. Um, this is a deep, deep, deep blue-green color. Uh, it's really gorgeous and I think it would be very useful for mixing. I've touched on this a little bit already, but I do want to reiterate that all of these Roman Schmal Aquarius paints, what really sets them apart is how easy they are to re-wet and how well behaved they are on the paper. Um, even tricky pigments like blue ochres and lapis lazuli, etc. Next we have malachite. So this is a naturally occurring mineral, um, but it's also the color that occurs on, for example, copper roofs when they oxidize. Um, so it's that copper green color. I've actually been meaning to reach out to Roman Schmal. I had a conversation with him about light fastness and he gave me a lot of information, but I forgot to ask him about malachite. Malachite is light fast, it doesn't react to light, but it does oxidize under a number of different circumstances. So I've been meaning to ask him about that. I haven't checked in uh, whether he's done any testing on his malachite. Um, but if you have any questions for him, do let me know down in the comments. He's absolutely wonderful about answering questions. Um, there is a real Roman Schmal behind Roman Schmal Aquarius, and he's really attentive and wonderful to contact. So any questions, just let me know down in the comments below and I'll get in touch with him. Next, we have Glauconite. Uh, PG23. So this is a green earth pigment or terre verte. Green earth or glauconite is known to be generally one of the hardest pigments to re-wet uh, and to disperse. But once again, Roman Schmal delivers a super easy to re-wet, very well behaved paint with this pigment. It is of course low tinting as this pigment always is but it does disperse very nicely on the paper and it picks up very easily from the pan. Finally, last but definitely not least, we have goethite, uh, or brown ochre. This is PBR, again, not applicable. Uh, this is a naturally occurring mineral. It's a nice brown color. Uh, you might be familiar with this color from Daniel Smith. Before sending me this paint, and I would agree, Roman Schmal told me that his version is more brown. I wasn't really sure what he meant by that, but having tried it, this is a deeper, darker brown, and it doesn't have that gritty, sandy feeling of the Daniel Smith version. It does have a pronounced granulation, but it does have um, a smoother feel overall, and it's definitely more of a like an umber brown rather than uh, sort of sandy. Okay, well, that was a trip. The Paints are now dry and I've done a lifting test on each of the swatches. So now you can admire all of them together and I'll also zoom in on a few at a time. I know that I'm super impressed with the majority of these colors and I'm really looking forward to using them more. But I'm curious to hear from you which of these colors you're most interested in. Will you be buying any of these Roman Schmal Aquarius colors? Let me know down in the comments below. In the description of this video, I've left an affiliate link for Jackson's where you can purchase all of these new paints. They are now available. As always, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell so that you'll be notified when my next video comes out. See you soon. Bye-bye.